and welcome to season one of the official P&O Cruises podcast, Heart to Heart, with me, Amy Hart. I am so excited to be hosting this podcast. Some of you may know that I used to be cabin crew, and my favourite thing was meeting new people, learning about their lives, asking them questions. So hosting this is an absolute dream come true. Across the series, we'll be meeting some well-known faces, and we'll definitely learn a lot more about them. So what are we waiting for? Let's go and meet them. Today I'm at Squizitos in Lewis meeting Ollie Smith. He is one of the P&O Cruises food heroes. He's written loads of books and he's also on Saturday Kitchen. I cannot wait to speak to him. Well, Ollie, thank you so much for joining me today. Can you tell me where we are? We're in Squizitos in Lewis and I'm really grateful to you for coming to my kind of local. It's I a restaurant will, I, I love. I will go anywhere for you, Ollie. Yes, well, likewise. I, I, I feel the reciprocal, you know, I we should go on a tour. I heard there was a free glass of wine, of so I will literally travel anywhere for a free is. glass of wine. Any time of the day or night. Now, talking of wine, you're known for your wine, but you're also a singer and also a screenwriter. Like, how has your career led you to where you are now? This is a very good question. You've done your research. Um, it's true. I used to write animation for film and TV. So if you ever grew up and watched Pingu, Pingu the Penguin. Yes. I, I was head writer for three series I on mean, Pingu. Mm. I don't want to be rude, but there wasn't many words. No, I know. Like... But that's not how we wrote the scripts. We, we wrote about what they were doing. It was all come here, go over yeah. there. Don't put your foot in that pink pot and all the rest of it. But it Just was... you writing like, wah, 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 wah. We did have to write. We had to actually write what the what the puppets would say yeah. if it made sense. So then the voice artists would translate it into Penguinese. So everything that was written as dialogue was actually written, but it was wow. more like writing for silent comedy. It was more like writing for Laurel and Hardy. You're kind yeah. of writing the Pratt Falls and what happens in the story and yeah. when Robbie the Seal falls off his toboggan and yeah. all that stuff. I absolutely loved it though. And, and it, it is probably the thing people get most excited about when I they am, meet me. I'm so excited now. <laughs> and now I want to go home and put it on for Stanley. Because well, I, I oh, let him. Of course. So, Congratulations, hooray. Thank you. My best friend's a primary school teacher and she keeps telling me about screen time for kids. And she's like, as long as he watches all the old stuff, he's fine because the graphics aren't as good. Yes. So we're watching Super Ted, we're watching oh. Button Moon, uh, Meet the Muppets. Charlie and Lola uh, Char also, also wrote See, a bit of that. Oh, okay. Wallace I'll put that Gromit. on as well. Okay, amazing. The movie. If Amazing. You, you wait long enough in the credits. Have but he, what's he like and what's his favourite? Um, he loves Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Oh. And because I'm trying to indoctrinate him into the cult of Disney, yeah. um, whenever I put it on, I get the Mickey Mouse toy. So I sit him down, I put Mickey Mouse, and then I hold Mickey Mouse, the toy, up against... <laughs> and I shout, love him, no, love no, no. him. And I'm like, look, Stanley, Mickey, <laughs> Mickey. And then I hand the toy oh. to him so that he can hold it while he watches it. He's literally seven months old. He's got no That's, idea what's going on. Well, he probably will. It's um, all soaking in. And what else? Do you know? He loved Saturday Kitchen the other day that we were watching. He was Very laughing kind. at Thank that. Yes. Um, he loves it with senders with his bottle in the morning. Oh, bless him. Literally, yeah. I remember when my two, uh, who are now a uh, little bit older, but when they were growing up, it was wonderful to share moments yeah. that you all really, really loved. Yeah. The night garden was something they absolutely yes. loved. It was very surreal and very peculiar, yeah. but I found it quite intriguing. They seemed to laugh yeah. their heads off. See, I loved Zap when I was a kid, Ooh, which was the, the, the comic book. I um, mean, you went and it had like Daisy Dares yeah. and Cuthbert Lily, who yeah. said silly, and the hands. And I put that on and he laughs his head off. It's, it's what we're supposed to do, have yeah. fun and enjoy things. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I'm going to make sure I put Pingu yeah. on the list. Do. Pingu in the toy shop was oh, one I really enjoyed okay. writing. Yeah. Okay, I'll put that on today. Still available. I don't get royalties, but okay. hey, it's fine, it's fine. But how did you end up doing wine? I entered a reality TV show called... Wine Idol. I mean, that's my kind of reality I TV know, show. Because I, I love reality TV and wine. Yes. Is that available on YouTube? Well, I'm sure Stanley will love it. Do you know, I don't know if it is. I had a ridiculous beard at the time that I think I called the 2001 or whatever year it was. 2005. It, was, it took me so... 2005, thank you. It took me uh, that many years to grow it, basically. I was. It was absurd. I think it fell off at the end of the competition. But I was, at the time, busy writing scripts, and it was actually... Wine had always been a big part of my life. When I started out in life, uh, my Saturday job when I was like 16, 17, mm -hmm. was working in a wine shop. So I'd yeah. deliver the boxes and people would get so excited when they unwrapped them. I thought, wow, it feels like Christmas every day to yeah. these people. What is inside? So I'd always had this kind of this kind of hankering to learn more about wine. Mm -hmm. And when the show came along, Wine Idol, oh, I didn't think I stood a chance. I really didn't because it was sommeliers. It was people who worked in wine shops, people whose families actually made wine. Mm -hmm. And there was me. I write cartoons for telly. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> and it just went, it went my way. I mean, it was a lot of heats. I think about 6,000 people entered in the end. Oh, wow. Got down to the last 10 and the last three. And my wife, Sophie, was very pregnant with Ruby, our first yeah. uh, daughter at the time. And she was really worried about what would happen if I won because, yeah. you know, it's a completely unknown step. 
it's turned out okay. It's yeah, fine. It's so, okay. See, seemingly for now. So where did you study wine? I studied wine at Wine and Spirit Education Trust, the WSET. And actually that was part of the prize for Wine Idol was getting a wine education. Okay. And I would say that anybody can apply for that. You can yeah. do day courses, three-day courses, week-long courses. You can do years, diplomas, and yeah. so on. And it is a really good way, if you're into wine, of actually kind of finding a system to analyse it and to enjoy it even more. Yeah. So it's all about the food pairing, where the grapes come from, what the countries are. Yeah. And it brings it to life. It's almost like if, if you really love Disney, it's like going into the world of Disney, picking out the genres, picking out the different yeah. characters and finding out why you love the ones you do yeah. as well as why you love the ones you don't love the yeah. ones you don't. I've been saying for years that I want to get into wine. Yes. Um, I went to the Foodies Festival and Brilliant. Joe Wadsack Legend. was there. Legend. Um, and he was saying about how all the wine experts are like men. So I was like, yeah, we this, need is, more this is my calling. More women, this is my calling in life is to talk about wine for a living. You should definitely um, do that. So I looked into like Hotel Devan and stuff and then I got pregnant and I couldn't drink any wine for nine months. And it was a very sad time in my life. Well, I don't know about that. It's worked out okay. <laughs> the thing I would say about wine is that anybody can taste it. You don't yeah. need any special skills. It's accessible now to all. And I yeah. think the way to talk about it is in the way that you would talk about it yeah. and really not to worry about how someone else describes it. Because yeah. when I started, it did feel like a bit of a club. There was almost a secret code yeah. where people would say something about a wine and I felt like I didn't belong. And I thought, you know what? For me, wine is actually not about the wine really, it's about the person who's in front of you and what they really love, yeah. what the budget is, what's on the dinner table yeah. that night, where they want to shop from. And you're thinking on behalf of them so that they can have as much fun as yeah. possible with that bottle of wine. So I used to be an air hostess and um, I was talking to a couple at wine once and I said, I'm a bit of a chav. I said, I only drink white Zinfandel. And they were like- Perfectly if, fine. I, I don't anymore, I just like to say, I'm a, I'm a Provence. It's a, it's I'm, a a I'm a Provence. You, I'm a Provence way, grab now. bits wine. Yeah, um, good. I said like, you know, I'm a bit of a chav. I only drink uh, white Zinfandel and um, he said but if you like it that's yes, fine so we drink our red wine with yes. ice cubes yes. in it and everyone judges us but it's how we like to drink it and if we're paying for the wine we will drink it how we like to drink it I completely agree and I think you can use wine in so many ways you know it works brilliantly in cocktails you know if you've got some fun inexpensive everyday wine yeah you know top it up with some the spanish do it really well in the sangria yes. you know, top it up with lemonade and a bit of chopped fruit it's lovely yeah christmas time mulled wine yes. we all do it and, and yet somehow, or if you do a champagne cocktail, that's apparently really glassy. But you're right. As soon as somebody puts an ice cube in, why is that yeah. bad? It's ridiculous. Wine should be as you wish it to yeah. be. And I'm totally with your lovely couple on beer yeah. first class. And also they're in first class. They can do what they exactly. like. I once met Robert Redford on a BA first class mm. flight. And the lady next to me, she was watching a movie with him in. She turned and went to him, uh, Mr. Redford, I, I, I'm watching a film. That you're in it. You're in it. He just went, yeah, I know. Oh. I thought, what a cool kind of easy... Yeah. Fire. I um I sat Fire. in front of Kiefer Sutherland <gasps> in business the last time I went to New York. Oh, the lost um, boy. And there was a mum and dad on this side and two kids on this side. And they kept going, go and ask him, go and ask him. Yes. So they went and asked him for a picture and he was so kind to them. He was so lovely. So, so, so lovely. You're talking about champagne cocktails. And I have a thing where Prosecco and Elderflower, yes. amazing. Yes. But if I'm having a glass of champagne, mm -hmm. why am I going to ruin it? with elderflower cordial this is a good question so like prosecco it'll make it taste nicer well, champagne is champagne it's horses for courses because prosecco is a really fruity iteration yeah. of, of, of a sparkling wine champagne can be a bit more savory so it's what you kind of mix it with the french love to put a bit of blackcurrant cordial effectively in and make it a keer with yes. the champagne and that's nice but i think with champagne you know you can you can turn it into something a bit more powerful you know think of you know putting a bit of yeah. brandy in it with a sugar lump at christmas time and then boom it's a detonation in the glass mm -hmm. so there's different ways of doing it and i think look if i'm having a really classy you know vintage glass of something really yeah. rare i'm probably not going to make a cocktail with it yeah. but if it's an everyday glass why yeah. not i think why not mm -hmm. customize it as you see fit you say about Kira Royale. So yeah, when like I them. first started flying... Dangerous. I, dangerously yeah. drinkable. Well, dangerous even more in oh, no. my case. So when I was 18 and I first started flying, oh, yeah. I was like... I knew about a Bucks Fizz, of course. Of course. Of course I did. I didn't know about a Kira Royale. So mm. I was like, oh, that's nice. Orange and blackcurrant. So I was like, I love blackcurrant. So I got out a glass of Sprite. Yes. And poured myself a glass of Sprite. Mm. And it was only as I was starting to crack open the little bottle of Cassis, someone said, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm gonna have a fizzy black currant. And they How were like, you not when not when you're not when you're working. <laughs> were you gonna do it? I was obviously I didn't I didn't get there, but no. I was like, 
which is blackcurrant juice, isn't it? Yeah, they were like, but it was like, no, no it's, got some it's booze liqueur. It. It's got booze. I was like, oh, okay, sorry. I thought it was just blackcurrant that's, juice. That's quite, that's potentially <laughs> so, quite yeah. dangerous. I quite yeah. like just drinking it over ice, that. In the, yeah. the wintertime, it's lovely. Mm. Delicious And shambor. Bit of shambor. See, liqueurs, I'm going to go in there, I'm going to say, I think even creme de menthe, that minty one, I love it. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Went to France this summer with my eldest daughter, who is 18. Yeah. And she's never really been into stronger drinks. She has the occasional yeah. glass of wine, the occasional glass of beer. I think because we've had a household full yeah. of everything always, she's quite relaxed about drinking. Yeah. Um, but I persuaded her to have this creme de menthe, this great big green yeah. glass of... I mean, I think it's delicious. Yeah. Turned out she absolutely loved it. So oh, I finally felt like yeah. I found a drink she was yeah. really into. Hurrah. Now, all her friends are going to be drinking White Lightning. She's going to be like, I only drink creme de menthe. I only drink creme de menthe. <laughs> I call it my, my Kermit, Kermit the friend, yeah. Kermit the frog. At the, oh, at the corner shop. Do you have any creme de menthe? Creme de menthe, please. It's good. It's yeah. good. I'm telling you. It, it, liqueurs deserve to have a comeback. I think I know a lot about wine. I probably don't know as much because I did a few like wine tasting days when I flew. Yeah. They did a really cool thing because obviously... On the aircraft, they say, like, you know, passengers will say to you, oh, what wine do you recommend? Yes. And we're like, well, we've never tried them because we can't drink them. So know, they you? got us on these days um, where they would give us all the business class food to try with all the wines. They called them wine guru days. And they oh. were amazing because we then oh. were able to then on on the aircraft say, oh, yeah, if you're having that, I would definitely recommend this. This goes really well with it. So I feel like I know a lot, but... For someone like me who then, if there's a menu in front of me and there's three wines, I will go for the middle one always. Not, not the most shout. expensive, not, not the most shout. cheap. What tips you have? Because some restaurants you go to, they hand you a wine list that is not a list. It's, a, it is, it's, it's an atlas. I know. We'll come to that in a minute. Mm, um, it's an atlas. And there's 50 red wines and 50 white wines. And, and I just re and I just go, um, I'll just have, do you have a Cote de Rome? Yeah. Which is actually a very solid, it's, um, I do love brilliant it. pick. Um, that is a genuine, white coat to run as well. Reds are fantastic. But whites, you know, you don't see yeah. them as often. Do They're you really have good. any tips? Because one thing I do love is we recently went to Limewood after we got engaged. Nice. And um, the thing that I loved the most about it was the wine, like the sommelier, who was just, I felt really posh. I felt like I'd made it in my life. What do you have? Like there was a, there was, a, <laughs> um, there, was a, there was a guy who was just walking around and I said to him, Oh, I, I, we're having the beef. I said, I really like Cote de Rhone. Yep. And he was like, okay, well, if you like Cote de Rhone... Did he try you it need... on a Gigondas or a Chateauneuf du Parc? Um, th there, no, there was one um, that was a, a mix between... I wrote it on my phone. It was mm. like a mix between um, a Temporilio, oh. a something else and a something else. Oh, nice. You've um, Spanish kind of... Yeah, bit, yeah, and it was so good. Do you know, I think those... It Cote didn't Cote give me the wine shudders. No, the, I love it. The, <laughs> the wine, wine shudders. shudders. <laughs> if you're not quite sure. I think if you're looking at a list and in general, you know, thinking what's good value, at the moment, for whites, reds yeah. and indeed fizz, Spain is a really safe bet. And there's within that, there's Rioja, which is very kind of yeah. popular. I would say if you're feeling a bit braver, mm -hmm. my solid tip, which I absolutely love, is to choose from a place that you're not expecting wine to come from. So that could be Greece, could be Romania, could be yeah. Mexico, could be India, could be Japan. And ask the people in charge, say, you know, which is the one that's off the beaten track that you really wish people would taste and they really don't? Because you've just got to have there's, that little bit of encouragement. There's a lot of wine coming from Scandinavia. There's a bit more coming from Scandinavia. Yeah. It's coming from all over the place and it's still expanding. So here in the UK, we started... Oh, you know, Eastern in Roman European. Times. Eastern European, yeah. yeah, amazing stuff. But here in the UK, we started in Roman times. It kind of died off a bit. And since the 1950s, it's suddenly booming. And I would say, again, on restaurant wine lists, English still white wine yeah. is absolutely amazing. The grape you want to try is Bacchus. Smells okay. like elderflower. Right. Tastes like somebody's put a lime in a pencil sharpener and just squirted it right at you. It's so invigorating. I love it. Okay. But off the beaten track is always good value, interesting flavours, and it's the thing that the people in charge will really want you to taste. They'll get enthusiastic. Yeah. Remember, they don't want to rip you off. They want you to come back through the door time after time. Yeah. So, you know, trust them. And I would say trust them in the wine shops as well. Ask opinions. Tell them what you like. Yeah. Tell them what you don't like. And then you should be away. It's mm -hmm. a conversation. Wine is about having a conversation. What's the best wine you've ever tasted? That's a really good question. I think when I first kind of had a light bulb moment with wine, I tasted a £3.29 bottle of French white wine. The grape was called Terre. And I was in an odd bins in Edinburgh as a student and it invigorated me. It just lifted my soul. Yeah. And I wanted to find out, would it taste different if somebody else had made it? Would it taste different if it was a different grape? Would it, how would it be if the climate was different that year? What food would it go with? I couldn't wait to share it with my kind of friends yeah. and all the kind of people in my life. So that was a real light bulb and it was good value. And that was the moment I thought, yeah. that's incredible. For me though, the most memorable moment, I mean, I have tasted some ridiculously 
iconic wines and I'm really lucky in my job. Yeah. But the one that sticks in my mind actually was when I was in a vineyard in Hungary and they make an amazing sweet wine called Tokai. Yeah. And we were out in the vineyard and the grapes were just sitting there on the press, just gently under their own weight, oozing out this sweet elixir. Hadn't even started fermenting, but I remember getting a thimble full of it because it's incredibly yeah. valuable and precious. Having a little taste. It wasn't quite wine yet, but it was on the journey. Yeah. But having that glimpse of the raw material before it came to wine, for me as a kind of wine fan, yeah. oh, I felt like backstage at the best gig you've ever wanted to go yeah. to. You're in the dressing room, you're chatting with the stars. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is just paradise for me. So that was the most memorable. It was just... It was an unbelievable moment of just luck at the right moment and time. Yeah. When you said about like, what would it taste like yeah. in, diff in different circumstances? Have you been to 10 Green Bottles in Brighton? Yeah, brilliant. Yes. I love their wine tasting because the first time I ever went, they gave us like a white wine. So if I like, taste that, now swirl it around and taste it and it tasted different. And That's they gave exactly. us a lemon segment. Yeah. And do, do the lemon and then taste it and took all the acidity away yes. and it tasted like three different wines even though it was genius. all the same glass of Absolute wine. Absolute genius. I think you're, you made the point about kind of decanting it and pouring it out. I think that's really important even for good, cheap and cheerful daily wines. Yeah. Whites and reds, if they're, you know, not giving you very much yeah. aroma and flavour, try just pouring them into a jug and then pour yeah. them into a glass. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. Don't need a fancy decanter. No. You know, I mean, you can buy them from my website if you want, but I mean, <laughs> why would you? Uh, but they're, they're re it really opens up the yeah. flavours and aromas. It's like turning up the dial uh, you know, on your favourite yeah. track. So definitely worth doing. Extra bit of effort, maximum yeah. enjoyment. If you really want to impress people at a dinner party, what bottle of wine do you take? Because I mean, it must be a bit of a pr bit pressure for you yeah. turning up yeah. to dinner parties. Yeah. You can't take a bottle of Ernest and Gallo, I mean, White Zinfandel. I, do you know what? Yeah. I have got in my cellar, I actually collect sort of interesting, iconic, old, everyday wines and age them to see how they turn yeah. out. And I've got some, you know, Jacob's Creek, everyone yeah. knows the kind of, and I've got some old reds that I bought, you know, way back in the 90s, maybe even some from the 80s. Yeah. And they're actually aging surprisingly well. Like some of those wines just are knockout. And it yeah. was at a time when the vineyards were great and everything was working. So some of those big brands, they can have amazing wine. I think if I'm going to a dinner party, I'm sort of thinking two things. One, I want people to actually enjoy the wine, but I also want to choose something that's maybe got a little bit of recognition factor because I love Greek wine. It's yeah. my great passion in life. But if I turn up with a Greek grape, most people are going to start talking about Red Sea and they may not know what it is. If I've got time, I would love to talk them through it because it's yeah. my passion. But if you want to kind of put the icon on the table, I think your best bet is Syrah or Shiraz from Australia, which has been for a long time, a bit under the radar. It was big in the 80s and yeah. the 90s. Now the quality is massive. The prices are still pretty friendly. Yeah. People know the grape. They probably haven't had it for a while and it's super friendly. Mm -hmm. So as soon as you taste it, it's like somebody's just put a black currant next to a bonfire and you just feel all that lovely warmth, all that sense of good mm -hmm. cheer. It's like somebody's just, yeah, giving you a little bit of a glow in your yeah. inner soul. It's like, yes, I want to share mm. this feeling with absolutely everybody. Talking of reds, can you tell me about this one? I can. I'm actually picking it up with a stem because good. I picked it up like this earlier and Joe Fatterini. Oh, yeah, you know, you've told got to, me. You've got to pick it up by the stem. But having said that, if it's a glass that, this, that is this small, I'm kind yeah. of all right to hold it by the bowl. Because what am I going to do on a stemless wine glass, Joe? Exactly. Yeah, or a pint glass. I mean, let's be real. If you're having a you pint of your Prosecco and Elderflower. You can get a, a full bottle of wine in a pint No, in two pint glasses. Can you? Because, no, I've never tried. no, so me and my friend used to go clubbing back in the day. Mm. And we only liked wine. So we used to buy a bottle of white Zinfandel from the bar. But obviously, they wouldn't let you have the bottle. So we'd just say a bottle of white Zinfandel, two pint glasses, two pint glasses and two straws, please. Nice. Nice. Why not? I never remember. I never remember us ever having a second one. <laughs> no, no, it's always just the one. This is from uh, Sicily, which is another great okay. place for good value. It's really, it's basically a super sunny, mm -hmm. turbocharged place. So all the grapes are always going to have full ripeness in Sicily. No wine shudders. Yeah, exactly. No wine shudders. <laughs> and with Italian reds, you tend to get a little kind of kick. If you think of that Nike swoosh, that little uptick, mm -hmm. a little kick of zip, just acidity, mm -hmm. freshness at the end. That's what makes them superb. You know, with with like nibbles, like things like salami, that'd be so scrumptious. Yes. I don't know why I don't have any salami here. I've always got it in my pocket. Yeah. I'm like, I should pour one out and start chopping it out. Um, but I absolutely love the variety on offer from Italy. I just think it's a sensational country. And right on our doorstep, you know, I think of all the places that I've traveled. I'm lucky enough to go quite a lot around the coast of Europe. I see great things from Spain, France, Italy, yeah. Greece, Portugal. You know, it, it's all right here. And yeah. it's so, there's, there really is a taste for absolutely everybody to, to really yeah. love. I feel like I want to start branching out of it because I am, I do love a Pinot Grigio. Yeah, nice, um, why not? And, but I have it everywhere I go. So now I think I maybe start, obviously when I go on my Caribbean cruise, it's oh, yes. not going to 
it's not gonna. I'm not gonna get like a Barbados wine and stuff. Bit of rum though, you'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. And the local Guinness, the, the Beijing Guinness is amazing. Yeah, it's what the locals drink. It's yeah. really good. It sort of has a molasses feel mm. to it. Sunset, cold Guinness, weirdly amazing in Barbados. Well, rum leads yes. us on to. Oh. Oh, has someone written a book? Someone's written a book. Right. Ollie Smith. That's you. <laughs> um, so this is your cocktail atlas. Yes. I love this. Thank you. You've given me this. And it's signed signed by the author. Thank you. Would this be a first edition? It is, it's a first edition. It it's, is. It's a first edition signed by the author. Yeah. So that is my retirement. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think it might have significantly devalued it by having a scroll. So, this is a cocktail atlas. It's cocktails from all around the world. This took you two years. It took me two years. Yes, it did. And I did have to test every recipe multiple wow. times. It's such a hard life being a drinks expert. Um, but for me, the, the thought really was that cocktails are a way of traveling. You know, people always talk about where a wine comes from. You know, mm -hmm. it might come from France yeah. or Spain or whatever. But really with cocktails, it, for some reason, we'd sort of forgotten. You know, rum comes from the Caribbean, whiskey, you've got yeah. Scottish whiskey, you've got Japanese whiskey, gin now from everywhere. But they have a kind of a root. They all have an identity that comes from somewhere. It might be a lead ingredient like yuzu from Japan. Yeah. But wherever it comes from should lead you to something that is totally unique mm -hmm. and represents in some way the character of that place. So I really got into the idea and it's all laid out by continent. Yes. So if you want to travel to India tonight, we can do that. If you want to go to South Africa, we can do that. If you want to go to Namibia, if you want to go anywhere in the world. Alaska is even in there, I believe. Oh, wow. Well, it, technically it's ice, isn't it, really? Do you know Antarctica how many roughly cocktails are in 230, there? more than I think, actually, in the so end. So even if I had one every Friday, it would still yes, take me five would. years. <laughs> it actually would. <laughs> Um, it would. Five yeah. years to get through and, the book. And they're, to be honest, a, a lot of them are super, super simple. And they're ingredients that you'll find you have yeah. knocking around. And you, when, when am I ever going to use that? That's the, that's the reason. Well, the the book. World Cocktail Atlas. There that's you go. Why. Go traveling. Now, it says here yes. that you've had six books. Yeah. You, how many more books have you got in you? Well, actually, the publisher has asked me for the next one. <laughs> um, and I say, I'm really excited about the title. I can't reveal it just yet. Okay. But it's, it's um, more of a... There will be recipes. There will be yeah. cocktails, wine, foods. I can't really talk about it. I'm not allowed to. I've just said too much. <gasps> okay. However, it's a lot... I'm not allowed okay, to say right, anything, I'm, not allowed to say okay, but I'm really excited about it. Let's talk about travel. Travel. So you've traveled a lot with work when yeah. you were a singer. Are you a screenwriter? And now, as a wine guru. Guru, I love like that. Where is the best place you've travelled with work? Oh, I was once on a cruise with my family in the Caribbean mm -hmm. and we just walked left off the ship. There was a busy beach. We turned a corner. There was an empty beach. We, we sat down, yeah. went for a swim. And I remember looking at the ship and thinking, oh, absolutely beautiful. And then just in front of us, literally metres away, whales breached out of the ocean they were in a circle one was coming up through the middle feeding wow. and they repeated it and i was with my kids who were like six and eight and the penny dropped us how magical this was what was one in a million chance mm -hmm. but that access to something so epic so pristine so natural was something i will never forget but then i think of you know europe yeah there's so much i love about europe i mean I, i've traveled extensively throughout i do love greece i go there pretty much every year. And I have done yeah. since I was 19. I mentioned I love Greek yeah. wine. I think, again, you just have so much within Greece. You know, the islands, the mountains, the mainland is incredible. The lakes are amazing. And, and people, I think, immediately think of whitewashed villas and yeah. little kittens. And there is just so much to explore. So I, I, I love a beach holiday, but I, I love also getting my knapsack yeah. on, kind of going exploring. I want to go to the local food market, find the restaurants, you know, drink the yeah. local wine, taste the local beer, find out what the spirits are that people are making at home, yeah. distilling for themselves, and get really among it. That, for me, is, is what travel's all about. Amazing. Yeah, I love it. Um, where's your bucket list travel destination? I've never been to India, and I'm desperate okay. to go. So I would love to go to India. I've got a lot of friends who live there, and I've always wanted to see the Himalayas, so that'll probably be top of my list. But, you know, anywhere that has... Has a, a kind of a, a pristine natural environment and a bit of a dynamic, thriving city scene. Take your pick. I'm going to go. I'd love it. I, I just think the backdrop, somewhere like New Zealand, I think of the buzzing cities and then the amazing natural landscape you can explore. Hard to beat, really. Right. Let's talk about the Glass House Restaurant, my absolute favourite on board. Is it really? No Are you ships. just saying that? No, it is. Can I say I'm not? I'm not. I, I, I'm not pinching you or making you no. say that in any way. So last year we went on our PO Cruises holiday and we did seven nights because I had to get off the ship because I was about to hit the oh hit level, the zone hit the zone where you can't, can't be travel. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're pregnant. Um, so we went to the Glass House on the first night and we did all of the restaurants. Then the last night we had like one night left. And because I'd done all the plans for like the whole holiday, I said, Sam, you can choose the restaurant. Hey, Sam. 
and he chose the glass house. I absolutely love him. What so on the first night, we had all the tapasy bits for starter, and then we had the sliders. Yes. And then on the last night, we had tapasy bits again. Mm. We had them all. And then we thought it was a good idea to also have the beef platter. You must uh, have the beef Which is three platter. different types of beef. Be three ways. And we like literally were like, we rolled out of... That restaurant, it rolled Love out. It. So what was the inspiration behind the glass house? Well, for me, I wanted great food. I wanted accessibility for people of all ages. For the wine, I wanted natural light. I wanted a choice so that everything was served by the glass. So it represents good value. If you're having fish for lunch, I'm having the beef. We can also have different wines. Yeah. You can line up the glasses, taste around the world, compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. All of these things were in my mind. But really, what it really boils down to for me is a, is a space that's informal, super welcoming and where people can explore and decide for themselves yeah. which wines they actually really yeah. love. And when I do my tastings, I always give them the four points of the compass. You know, I have a zesty white, a rich white, a light red and a heavy red. So that once you've done that, you kind of pretty much know what your palate really loves. And you can then go and explore the different corners of the menu. So every wine is laid out by style. Yeah. And every every single glass you taste has, in my view, the best view in the world. Yeah. Especially now that I look at Arvia and Iona and I see the widescreen vistas. I'm so proud of all of the, the glass house wine bars and the team behind it, yeah. the training that goes into it. Um, because the feeling that we give to people, I hope, is just that extra bit of magic. Yeah. For me, it's an absolute privilege to be a small part of somebody's holiday. It's yeah. precious time. So if I can do it through the wine, fantastic. Even better, though, is if I'm on board pouring an individual yes. glass. That's what I love. And also, I love the decor. The um, For those of you who haven't been on, uh, there's sort of walls yeah, that walls. are like wine racks yes. they're like glass wine racks yeah. and literally i was taking pictures of them saying Have sam you? in our next house oh. i want one of these to separate because i want a big open plan like lounge kitchen diner love that but i want the two panels yeah to separate yes uh, the dining room and the well, kitchen they, they look amazing and it's art it's enticing it's yeah a, it's a, i think it's welcoming because you're yeah you're sort of inviting people to share in it and that's what wine is really it's the heart of it is people getting together around a table yeah. Oh, I love that. That's very exciting. So we're going on in 23 days. I'm so excited. Um, and our first night, we're going to the Glass House. And I'm so excited. Is there anything like new I can look forward to? There's so much that's new. And I think the headline is working with one of my great friends and in my view, one of the greatest chefs we've got in this country at the moment, Jose Pizarro. Spanish chef. Awesome amazing. Man. Super passionate. All his food is about the provenance and quality of the ingredients. And it's just hard to think of someone and the dishes themselves that are just equally delicious. He himself is just such a lovely character and the food that he creates, second to none. And next year in the Glass House, the entire wine list is being revamped. And we're keeping one or two anchors that have been yeah. firm favourites since the start. But we've gone from a really beautiful list of wines that I'm so proud of to the most incredible, expansive list of wines that I truly cannot believe we're about to be serving on Pinot Cruises. It's wow factor that you're not going to believe. I will literally have to try them all. I have no other yeah, choice. I'll be there, with is, you. There, is, there is no other choice but to try them all. Maybe that's something we can do. Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Definitely. One, one of the 35 day cruises. Yeah, one Just, a day. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Done. Exactly. That's what I love about Pinot Cruises is that, you know, you have like, I've been to Jose's restaurant in London. Um, and obviously, you're on Saturday Kitchen talking about wine and stuff. And I love the fact that there's all these amazing things, but it's all in one place yeah. and I always say you know you can go and see West End level shows you can go and eat these amazing like restaurants and you can taste the amazing wine but everything is a five minute walk home that's so true back to your cabin and you don't have to carry any cash around it's no. just all done in your car yeah. it's so easy so easy I think it's it, for me it's easy magic isn't it it's yeah. just the spell never stops now you've got a podcast as well I have called A Glass With yes you've had over 80 guests do you have any like pinch me guests? Oh, so or many. Stand out guests. I mean, Pink was enormous. I mean, what an incredible person oh, to, to interview. I went to her house in Santa Barbara. It was amazing. She makes wine. She's got a winery there, as you do. Oh, my God. And a vineyard. She was so lovely. Alicia, she's yeah. really, she was amazing. Dawn French, massive fan. And the pinch me moment for Dawn was after we'd finished the show recording at her house. She just turned to me and went, do you want to go for a curry? And I thought, yes, <laughs> I do. I think everybody wants to go for a curry with Dawn. And again, just the most beautiful, beautiful experience. Just so full of joy, the whole yeah. thing. Yes, actors. I mean, Sam Neill was pretty big, the guy from Jurassic Park. Yeah. Phenomenal actor. What really impressed me about him was he speaks in a very measured way and he's very clear with his diction. And halfway through the show, he just said to me, did you know that I, I had a, a stutter? I do have a pronounced stutter. Yeah. And I don't think he'd ever talked about it before. It was a moment of revelation. He was, you know, very um, 
He's just very open about the whole yeah. thing. Plus, he's just got a kindness, the vibe that comes off him. You yeah. just think, ah, oh, I just want to be more Sam Neil. Just yeah. want to be more Sam. Have you got anyone that's on your list, on your hit list for future I think guests? You're going to be pretty high on the list yes, after this. Thank you. Um, I well, I've tried to go. Don't I know can if I've come tried on to, and talk about a person, glass of Lambrini. I'd love that. <laughs> Why not? I'll bring. I'll, I will bring the uh, the peach bellinis. I'm in for it. I've tried to get Piers Brosnan about three times, and he's the only person who said no. And his agent said no, and the tequila brand that he's supposed to be an ambassador yeah. for. Come on, that's a brilliant yeah. opportunity to talk about. Also not interested. I mean, he uh, turned up at his house. On the turned ri- up at his on house. The, on the video doorbell. Riding he his was motorbike. like, no, Ollie. No, no Brosnan, Brosnan I would love to get because I'd be fascinated just to talk to him. Well, I tell you what, let's let's make it easy for Pierce. We'll just talk about his art. He's very keen on his own artwork. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that. Have a look online. His art's remarkable. Pierce, if you don't want to do a glass with, you're always welcome here on Heart to Heart. There you go. Get Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll get you along too. Yeah. If you had any like dream projects, what would they be? Like, is there anything you you haven't done yet that you would love yes, to do? Yes, I I do. I mean, I, when I travel, I love walking to places. So when I get off a ship, I walk yeah. and I go and see where I can get to. So I'd love to do a show that involves walking from amazing destinations. You're not going to say to lesser known destinations. The, the show that I want to do as well. We could do it together. We'll do it together. Pilgrimage. I'm in. Yes, that sort of thing. Yes. Obsessed. Yes, my favorite show. Really? I really want to oh, do it. Amazing. So let's. So I lo- yes, I love the. Feeling we're available of, together. Yeah, we, we only come as a pair. We only come as a pair. Yeah. We sit together. <laughs> yeah. We do. I, I recently was walking up in Scotland and got completely shrouded in white cloud, and it was the most amazing feeling coming down from that. Basically, having your sight restored and your feelings. I was really scared. You know, you can't mm. see anything. You can't really feel anything. You don't know God. where you are. And suddenly, everything just looked so vivid. And I think that you know transition. Whenever yeah. you're walking anywhere. It may not be as extreme as that, but that's kind of what it does to you. It changes you and it restores you to yourself at the same time. So I would love to do a walking show that has some meaning, some yeah. cadence of something deeper. That would yeah. be great. Do you have any like pinch me moments from your career? I've got quite a few. I think when I was having lunch with Roger Moore, who was James Bond, that was the first one when I thought this is going to be interesting. And we ended up becoming great friends uh, for about 15 years, I think, before he sadly died. And when he passed away, I was the person who Radio 2 asked to do the tribute. I yeah. ended up writing in the... The paper I write for doing the tribute to him there. And it was just, that was a real pinch me mm. moment when I thought I have well and truly gone beyond the looking glass at this point. And I really miss him, yeah. to be fair. He's a wonderful man. He had a house in Mallorca, didn't he? He may well have done. He had quite a few. He was I in yeah, Monaco. He lived in, there. Did you? Did you see for him? Six days. No. Because it was, of Cas- it was Casa Amor. Of course you did. Casa Amor. What am I thinking? Did it's, you? Yeah, of course Casa you did. Casa Amor yeah. is Roger Moore's house. No. Yes. That was Roger's house. Roger's house. His Rogesty rules that roost. Yes. I never knew that. Because in all of the. Um, in all of the glass work, there was like a um, like a science, like you know, like the round test tubes was oh. like in all the glass work. Oh, really? Yeah. Intriguing. Roger Moore's house. I lived oh, yeah. there for a whole six days. Whole six days, amazing. I mean, I cried the whole time, but Did you? Um, oh. yeah. But it was great to live there. I mean, yes, it's great to say I, I've lived at Roger Moore's house. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, cool. I lived with Roger Moore once. You lived with him. Basically. You did. You did. You lived with part of him. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So you're also a singer. I've done a bit of singing. I've done yes. a bit of singing in this time. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite song to sing? Oh, that's a great question. I think anything kind of classic, a classic really, you know, anything like Sinatra's amazing. Yeah. I, there's an Aussie band I love called Boy and Bear that probably okay. people may not have heard of. They're very sweet guys. I stalk them to the extent that I'm now friends with them. And so whenever they're on I tour... I used to do that with like West End people. Yeah, you've yeah. got to do it. And it is weird when you kind of... I, was, I, went, I saw them in London recently and then I went and saw them the next night in Amsterdam because yeah. I'm just a mega fan. Literally in answer them sitting on a park Same bench set. in the morning, <laughs> saw them walking towards me, and I was like, "Hello, boys, how are you? Nice to see you. Like, what are you doing here? Coming to see you tonight?" So we went out for dinner and had a great time. So I think Aww. finding bands that you don't know that well and following them on the tour—that's also something I love yeah. doing. Anything that's going to kind of set the mood, feeling upbeat. That's the sort of thing I love to sing. At sort of family parties, oh, yes. if the mood is starting to drop, are they like, Ollie? I mean, it's, at, it's always Abba, isn't it? Give it's always got to be. Yeah, yeah, Abba comes out and I'm away. Yeah. Or what? I get my guitar out and What's... sing a lament. Oh. I've, I released a single, a very sad single, about a lost love who is now my wife. And that's, oh. So it all worked out at the end called Snow on the Borderline. Lost so if you want found. to go and download okay, that, I will Snow do. on the Borderline, I do have a single. Thank you. My pleasure. I will go and do that. It's quite sad. Okay. But it all turned out fine in the end. Yeah, exactly. She's lovely. Um, you need to write a follow up. Yeah, happily ever after. Happily ever after, yeah, exactly. Like Shrek. It's like, um, and also like, um, I love how Chubby Checker released yes. Let's Twist, and then was like, do you know what? I'm just going to release a song called Let's Twist, Twist again. again. <laughs> do you know? I lo- I do love great stars who have a second iteration, and I'm I'm a mega fan of George Harrison, and obviously mm-hmm. the Beatles, Traveling Wilburys, brilliant album. He got together with like Bob Dylan, Roy Orbison, all these old greats, Tom yeah. Petty, it's just Jeff Lynne's in there, just an incredible second wind. Yeah. So it's never too late. Yeah. It's never too late for exactly. anybody. If you feel moved by the music. Or the dance, 
Okay. Do it, do it. Mm. Um, what's your other song that you sing? I do, I do voulez-vous quite a lot, weirdly. <laughs> um, also, yeah, um, Gimme, Gimme, Gimme. I, yeah. I mean, it's a great song. <laughs> it's a great song. It's a great song. Have you seen Voyage? No, and my friend is trying to get me to go. I've literally, my schedule's been crazy and I'm really excited about going. Have you Make seen it? Make time for Voyage. You feel like you're in the 1970s because you're watching ABBA, Ooh. but then also because they say, please don't like record anything. And yes. everyone does really um, take notice of that. So when we were in like the like the sort of, tiered seats so i could see like the ava mosh pit yes um which i'm not sure i'd be up for but the ava mosh pit it was like pitch black because mm. nobody had their phones oh, out and it that. was amazing so it was oh. like literally like you're in the 70s oh i love it do you know funnily enough i was at a gig recently in north london with a young band called flight f-l-y-t-e again stalk them to the extent they're now my friends there's a pattern here mm. um but I realised when I was watching this gig that nobody had their phones out. And I mentioned it to the band uh, after I'd stalked them and yeah. become friends with them. And they said, yeah, it's kind of an unwritten rule at our shows that the, the crowd just doesn't do it. I thought that's really lovely because you, you're right there in it yeah. all together as one. Yeah. I have no objection to people if they want to yeah. film it. But it just occurred to me how unusual it is yeah. not to see it now. Yeah. Wonderful. 1970s forever, I say. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that annoys me about Voyage is when they have they play a bit of footage mm. um, while they're getting changed oh, and I'm like yeah. no, they're not. You're, you're, they're an you're an avatar yeah like, right. I, I know I know yeah. it's not the real yeah, ones, it's not the real ones. But I was I was there yes and I had Benny and Bjorn in one dance booth and Frida in the other dance booth you, hang on you, you it can was dance with ABBA no no so, no, so there's, there's the dance booth which like VIP booths where you can get drinks mm. and stuff yeah um, and then so they were in there but it was like knowing me knowing you because they were obviously in separate ones Right. Um, and then at the end, they all got into one, and the boys over went, "Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you have been watching Abba Voyage with Benny, Bjorn, and Frida." And the spotlight went on them, and they were like waving like a Vita on the balcony. Oh, it was lovely. That is quite moving. It was, yeah, I think I'd feel really moved to see yeah. them ride again. Yeah. Well, again, one more time. Yeah. But it's going to be again and again. Like that. Do you know what I'm thinking though? What, which other bands are we going to see, kind of once again that we thought we'd never see? I was um, amazed yesterday. I heard an AI version of Freddie Mercury singing Careless Whisper and it was knockout. I totally believed it was him and I thought, okay, all bets are off now. Who knows what's coming next? Adam Lambert will be so upset. He'll be furious. When, Bri when Brian sits him down Lambert. and says, Adam, I'm really Adam, sorry. We've got, we're <laughs> we've got AI. We've got AI. <laughs> um, Freddie's back. Freddie's back, so unfortunately. And he's 80 feet tall. Here's your redundancy money. Yeah. Seriously, you've been great. You've been great. You've been wonderful. Did you travel a lot with your singing? I did. When I was young, I was actually in a choir and I ended up traveling to Japan, to Eastern Europe. I went to Berlin when it was still uh, behind the wall. That was pretty, pretty incredible. Finland I went to. So I think anything you do with kind of passion and if you're really devoted to it, you never know where you're going to end up. So I, I love touring and I, I think that probably led really wonderfully for me into working with P&O Cruises because I naturally obviously wanted to spread the world of yeah. wine, but to do it on the road, feeling like you're doing a on different the, show in a different sea. place, on sea, but it's a different destination yeah. every night. You know, one night you're in Vigo, the next night you're in La Coruña and, and so on. And it's just brilliant. Absolutely magnificent. I'd love to do a med cruise just yeah, because so I've done, obviously I will have done two Caribbean cruises and I just think like, I need that variety in my life, you know? You got it. That's the And word. then I'll miss the beach. I'll have to go back to the Caribbean. Yeah, and it will just become a cycle of Med Caribbean, Med Caribbean, Med fjords, Caribbean. You know, shake it up with the fjords. So I've got a little quiz for you, a little cocktail quiz. Okay. Are you ready? I am. Five questions. All right. First created by Ernest Hemingway himself is the milky green drink of many names, Hemingway Champagne, the Hemingway, or Death in the Afternoon. Mm. The cocktail contains a flute of champagne and a jigger of what strong anise flavoured spirit? It's absinthe, isn't it? Correct. It's absinthe. Oh, One that's out of a five. naughty drink. To be labelled as a bourbon, a whiskey must be distilled from a mash that is at least 51% made of what grain? Corn. Correct. I've been down to yeah the USA, Kentucky. It's an amazing place. I mean, the whiskey you can make, but uh, you can make it anywhere. But yeah, corn. Oh, I got excited. I got excited. I was, I was smelling it. I was thinking, oh, can I make a cocktail? The Californian town of Castroville produces four fifths of the U.S. supply of which veggie, which among other uses gives its flavour to the liqueur Sinar. Oh, I don't know. I've not been there. I'd like to know. Tell me. Artichokes. Never knew that. Mm. Never knew that. You learn something new you every do. day. I'm amazed and delighted by that. I intend mm. to go and taste their artichokes. Nice. What is the clear colourless liqueur from Korea that has an alcohol content that varies from about 16.8% to 53% alcohol by volume? 
Yeah, that's that. Uh, it's called soju or something like that, yes. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's brutal, brutal. I would have probably pronounced it soju yeah. or soju. Yeah. Which cocktail made with white rum, pineapple juice, grenadine, and mascar- maraschino liqueur yeah. and a cherry is named for the most famous actress of the silent film era? Oh, hang on. What's in the ingredients again? So white silent rum, films. pineapple juice, grenadine, and maraschino liqueur. You'll have to tell me. Mary Pickford. Yes, and it's in my first book, The Home Cocktail Bible. You're oh, quite right. It's like out of sight, out of mind. You, you've you now got a new favourite child in the Cocktail Atlas and you've forgotten I've about, forgotten Mary, about Pickford. The Mary Pickford. I have. Well, 230 cocktails yeah, afterwards. You know, exactly. You're gonna, That's a lot. You're going to lose a few. Uh, what is your favourite cocktail? At the moment, I love the cocktail called the Luscious Lamington. Okay. So if you like a Lamington cake, which is an Australian cake covered in coconut and chocolate, which mm-hmm. I do... Uh, it's really easy to make. You basically show, shake a load of cream with vanilla vodka, a bit of Bailey's in there, and then it's just one of those cocktails that you also, you rim the glass with a bit of mm-hmm. chocolate and a bit of desiccated coconut. It just looks amazing. Mm. So when you've shaken it and poured it out, it looks great. It's great for Christmas. Totally scrumptious. Unbeatable. I do think we are, in this country especially, we're a bit um, bedazzled by what a cocktail looks like. Yes. It could literally it's taste like charm. petrol. But if it charm. comes with dry ice, I'm having it for my Instagram oh, where story. Do you, where do you stand on a sparkler? Oh, I love a sparkler. I love a sparkler. I think any cocktail that elevates the mood and makes your yeah. eye drawn to it, yeah. it's already done half the work. But I am a bit like fire scared. So like okay. at, my best fr- at, my, at my best friend's wedding, they had a sparkler photo. So I was like, I'm going to go to the back and just stand at the back away mm. from these like 100 drunk people with sparklers. And they were like bridesmaids to the front. And I was like, I don't want to. And I was like heavily pregnant. So I'm at the front and everyone, and I'm like, this in the pictures. For those of you listening, uh, that's me doing a very awkward smile. Right, my final question for yes, you. Yes, I'm ready. Hit this me. This is your holiday of dreams. Oh. You've been gifted a holiday of your dreams. Where are we going? I will say the seaside in Greece. And I would love to take my family with me because okay, I've just well, got great memories. That was, that was my next question. Who's coming? Who's, who are you taking Sophie, with you? Sophie, Ruby and Lily every every day of the week. Love Lovely. Them. And what are you going to do when you're there? It'll be a combination of lying down in the sun, bit of snorkeling, a bit of feasting, a little bit of sipping, marching inland to find some old ruins and repeat. Nice. Love it. Now, your favourite restaurant have said they'll fly in the team to cook whatever you want. Well, what are you having? I mean, I'm tempted to say Squisito of Lewis, which is where we're seated because they are really, yeah. really good. Favourite restaurant of all time? I think I'm going to ask Jose to come and cook for me. Nice. Because he's one of my best friends and genuinely, we do work together, I love his food. Mm -hmm. And I've loved his food for decades and I'm never going to stop. You loved it before it was cool. I loved it before it was cool. Yes. Now, your favourite entertainer or band is available to perform alive or dead. Who is it and what song do they open with? I think I'm going to have Aretha Franklin and I'm going to get her to sing Think. So it's just, you know, you're straight in, aren't you? Exactly. You've got to shake it around if that's going on. Thank you so much for joining me today. Your book, The World Cocktail Atlas, is out now. We can see you on Saturday Kitchen. And of course, The Glass House is on board P&O Cruises Ships. I cannot wait to go there in a mere 23 days. Cannot wait. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Lovely to see you. Thank you so much for watching today's podcast. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment below and tell me what your favourite part was. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, so you never miss anything. And of course, give it a like if you did.